So this is a quick ad hoc no script video that I'm putting together based on a uh, conversation that came out of Twitter where a bunch of people jumped on and seemed to be pretty passionate about things and it really kind of boiled down to uh, IPv6 and link local attacks which is what this video here is going to be about. So link local address and we'll go into the history of this and we're going to start with IPv4. Um, so in the back here uh, you can probably see I've got a, a Windows virtual machine here and the Ethernet address is 169.254. something. something. And a lot of the times people think of this as the IP prefix or the IP address that your machine gets when it just can't get DHCP for whatever reason. And that's somewhat true. So IPv4, the 169.254 slash 16 network block or subnet or prefix, whatever you want to call it, is an RFC address. And this is, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm just getting over being sick. This address, the 169.254, is an auto configuration address when there is no DHCP and there is no static IP. So if you take a bunch of machines and plug them into the same layer 2 domain, or the same VLAN, or the same dumb switch, however you want to look at it, but either way you're in the same layer 2 domain, with no static IP addresses and no DHCP server on there, they will all get 169.254.something.something .something .something addresses. With that, all the machines on that layer 2 domain can now talk to each other, and that's kind of the whole idea behind link local addresses. <clears throat> Pardon me, I apologize for that. Now, with IPv6, one of the things you're going to see, you're going to see FE80 show up a whole bunch, right? So here it is on uh, Windows, and if I go over here to my root terminal, if I do uh, if config uh, wlan0. So I've disabled my global unicast on this interface just for now, just because I want to demonstrate link local attacks. But again, you can see here it begins with FE80. So the prefix is FE80 through FEFF. Any any IPv6 address that starts with FE80 or goes all the way through to FEFF is going to be a link local address. Now, any device which is turned up which has IPv6 enabled in the kernel, and this can be Windows kernel or BSD kernel or Linux kernel or whatever kernel it happens to be for the operating system that you're running, if IPv6 is enabled, you will have a link local address. Whether you use global unicast IP addresses or not, whether you're using site local, I know those are deprecated, but regardless of the type of address you're using, if IPv6 is turned on, you will have a link local address. Now, much like the 169.254 addresses that we see up here, they will the IPv6 addresses also are restricted to layer 2 domains. So it has to be on the same VLAN, it has to be on the same dumb switch, however, again, you want to look at it. This means that traffic destined directly for a link local address will never cross a routing device. It's never going to cross a router, it's never going to cross a layer 2 VLAN, it's never going to cross a firewall. They are literally, if you think about it, link local, right? So you plug in, you've got link, and now you're local to that layer 2 domain. Now, what can we do with link local attacks? So one of the things that I, I talked about back in 2011, which is you know, going back now uh, nine years, uh, at the IPv6 summit, was something that I called fun at a hotel. Now, obviously, this is, this is a proof of concept. I don't recommend that you go and start doing this in public Wi-Fis or hotels just for you know kicks and giggles. If you are doing this as a red team engagement or as part of a penetration test, this is this is fantastic. But the reason that I called it fun at a hotel is because these are types of attacks that you can do on things like public Wi-Fi. You can do these at hotels, you can do these at coffee shops or any place else if you're on the plane or if you're on the train or, or whatever where everybody is connected, right? So you go to <clears throat> You go to uh, a coffee shop, you jump on the Wi-Fi, and even though, you know, I've got my work laptop, you know, Alice has her work laptop, Bob has his work laptop, and we're all connected to the same, everybody probably has some sort of firewall that's being pushed down by corporate, and 99% of the time, it's going to cover IPv4 only, right? It'll cover this address. Now, the nice thing about the link local addresses is very few people will do any sort of firewalling on these. Uh, specific types of addresses, right? They'll put stuff in at the firewall, at the perimeter. They'll do stuff uh, between interzones, between VLANs, anything that goes across a routing device for the global unicast IP address, which, you know, totally makes sense. Because if you're talking about a server or if you're talking about a desktop, right, you're not going to pick that up and bring it to, you know, Starbucks or Tim Hortons or the hotel or whatever, right? You're not taking your web server and 
plugging into uh, random Wi-Fi spots. But if it's your laptop, if it's uh, a phone, if it's a tablet, something along those lines, the nice thing about this type of attack is, first off, it's probably not going to get firewalled. And if you are doing a red team or pen test engagement and you do happen to get into a machine, right, these, these types of attacks will likely not get logged, right? So if you want to do some more uh, exploring around once you've got your, your initial foothold inside of an environment, do an IPv6 link local scan. And, and let's demonstrate that right now, right? So this is obviously just on my network at home. I'm not going to go break into a bunch of stuff. This is, again, just proof of concept. I want to show people how this can be done. So with IPv6, one of the nice things that we get are specific multicast addresses. <clears throat> Pardon me again. So with IPv6, we don't do broadcast. There, there, there is no more broadcast. It's all multicast. And the way that we can kind of abuse this is if we do ping 6 dash n dash capital i to specify the interface name put in wlan 0 and do ff02 colon colon 1 now let's break this down before we we actually run it so dash n we don't want to resolve host names this is the uh, the key thing here dash capital i and then the interface name as you can see on the windows example here um, I've got uh, my NPCAP loopback adapter, I've got an, another uh, NPCAP loopback adapter, I've got my, uh, my actual Ethernet adapter, and all of these have link local addresses, right? Same thing with Linux, right? So I've got a, uh, my loopback adapter, I've got my Ethernet adapter, and then I've got my wireless adapter. So I have to, because this prefix is, is shared technically amongst these three different adapters, I have to tell ping, whoops, which interface I want this to go out. So I'm saying I want you to go with the wireless interface. And then FF02 colon colon 1 is a special multicast address which pings all hosts in the multicast group. So we're going to ping it and we're going to get a ton of duplicate replies. Right. So every time we send one thing out, you can see we just get a ton of duplicates. So we could, we could narrow this down by doing, you know, dash C1 just to send one out. And But the problem is we don't really get a whole lot. So, okay, so ignore that last part. I, maybe I should have scripted this. So once we send out this ping, what we then want to do is take a look at our neighbor table. So the neighbor table in IPv6 is just like your ARP table. So we're going to do IP-F to specify the internet family. We're going to say internet6, inet6. We want neighbor show. And this is just like doing ARP-NA, right? And if you wanted to, you could do IP-F inet nay show, and you'll just get your ARP addresses as well. So let's go back here. And what we're going to do now, now we have a list of targets. Now remember, all of these targets, all of these link local addresses, are on the same layer 2 domain as my wireless network card, right? This could be my Ethernet card, it could be, you know, a USB Ethernet card, it could be whatever, right? So I'm just going to grab this one here. And a lot of security tools will follow this sort of uh, uh, syntax as well. So nmap, whoop, nmap-6. We'll put that in there, and then at the end you put in percent, and then the interface name, WLAN0. So instead of doing dash capital I, because a lot of them can take different things, you just put percent and then the interface name that's logically configured on the, uh, uh, on the laptop, and it'll just run the command. So it's nothing too crazy, it's a, a very basic nmap scan. Again, this is just a proof of concept, I don't want to go into, you know, hacker man territory where we start dropping in reverse shells and things like that, it's going to take too long. and I don't have anything prepped for that right now. While this is going, we'll have a quick bit of coffee. It's taking a little bit longer than I expected. Maybe I'll just kind of cut the video and... Oh, there we go. All right. So as you can see, we did get a whole bunch of open ports, which is fantastic. And then... You know, if, if we wanted to attack this, right, uh, I know that uh, Metasploit, uh, the MSF console, you know, you can drop in percent %wlan0. And let's just do something very basic, right? So if we just do NC, so for netcat, uh, we put in the link local address, right? Again, percent %wlan0, just like we did with, I'm pointing at my screen, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> just like we did with nmap, we put in the w, percent %wlan0, percent %wlan0, and then we specify the port. Netcat opens the connection, and there you can see I've hacked my printer. Well, I haven't really hacked it. I just connected to it over the HTTP server. And there you go. For those of you who are interested, I have an HP DeskJet 2540. It's fan fantastic. You know, it 
prints stuff like a printer should. So anyway, that's that's the whole idea behind a link local attack. So uh, again, you know, don't use this for nefarious purposes. This is a proof of concept just showing how it can be done. Um, if you are doing a red team engagement or a pen test where you have the authorization to do this, by all means, go right ahead. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. So that's a, a quick history of link local addresses, both IPv4 and IPv6. And remember, if, if even if your organization doesn't fully like use IPv6, as long as it's turned on, your machine will have a link local address, right? So this is always an attack vector. Again, probably not logged and probably not firewalled. Anyway, happy packet hunting, everybody.